Shri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 843, Guna Brit. Guna means quality, Brit means who holds, who supports, who bears, or can simply mean who has, who has qualities. The qualities of the Supreme Lord that are most well known and loved are his mercy, his love, his benevolence. Guna can also refer to the three modes of material nature, Sattva Guna, Rajoguna, Tamoguna. <clears throat> Shankaracharya gives the meaning. He supports the three modes of material nature. How are they there? Why are they there? How do they act? Where, how is their influence going on? In a very complex way because every living being has a different mix and even in one person at some point one mode may be prominent, and then in the next moment it may change. Someone may be in a peaceful, sattvic mood, and then something can happen and immediately fly into a rage of anger, which is, uh, that, that kind of anger is of <clears throat> Rajogun mixed with Tamoguna. So it's, it's all extremely complex trying to understand human psychology or even animal psychology. It's all very, very, very complex. Uh, behind it are the three modes of material natures and they're, pract and they're practically innumerable combinations. Behind it all is Krishna. He, it's his system and he upholds it. This explanation is also given by Baladev Vidyabhushan, similar. He says that in particular, the Supreme Lord, he supports the mode of goodness in the matter of maintenance, the mode of passion in creation, and the mode of ignorance in destruction. So creation, is Rajoguna, <clears throat> that is done by Brahma, he's a Guna avatar of the Supreme Lord, the creation in the mode of passion, maintenance, Vishnu himself by uh, his Purush avatars, uh, who's also Guna avatar, Shiradakashai Vishnu within the heart of every living being, Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hridesha Juna Tishrati, Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani, Yantra Rudhani Maya. Within the heart of every living being, he oversees everything. Hmm. He is Upadrashtanumanta Cha Bhota Bhokta Bhata Maheshwaraha. He is the seer, the allower, he allows certain things, he gives permission for various things to go on. Uh, <clears throat> he is the ultimate enjoyer of everything, he is the master of everything. This topic is summarized in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. How he maintains everything in the universe is the topic more complex than humans will ever understand. And then, through the agency of Lord Shiva, he destroys the universe. He's also very much directly involved as Sankarshan in doing that. So these three modes of material nature, which are concerned with the creation, maintenance, and destruction of everything. Everything comes into, be into being, exists for some time, and then ceases to exist. It may be a, a physical body, it may be a civilization, it may be a planet, 
It may be a mountain, it may be a building, it may be a, a shirt. He's interwoven with everything, overseeing everything. That's one perspective on his overseeing everything. Overseeing and upholding the whole system. <clears throat> Parashara Bhatta also interprets the name as meaning he who supports the three modes of material nature, but he extends it further to show that everything is under his control. It, it demonstrates his supreme power of controlling everything and therefore Parashara Bhatta who is the, the present series of names he's linking with the Ashta Siddhis or the Ashta Aishvaryas the eight yogic perfections or eight opulences attainable by mundane yogis which exists inherently in full in the Supreme Lord so Parashara Bhatta maps this name Guna Brit onto Ishitva because he is the supporter and maintainer and director of the three modes of material nature this Ishitva Lordship the, the quality of being the, the Supreme Lord Isha as in Isha Upanishad or Ishvara means the same thing Taitariya Upanishad says, Sarvasya Vashi Sarvasya Ishanaha. Ishana is another form of saying Isha, the controller who's on top of everything. Three modes are under him, and everything in this world is under him. Even apart from living beings, even uh, <coughs> the way a building, or a building is constructed, it can be in the mode of goodness, um, made from very simple materials such as mud and straw, which is very suitable for people who are cultivating the mode of goodness, or brick, cement, mortar, steel. Uh, this kind of building is in the mode of passion. And then a broken down building or something made from garbage which we see in shanty towns throughout the world, people just get some garbage from here and there, or some rejected materials, and make some kind of dwelling out of it. So that would be in the mode of ignorance. <clears throat> so buildings and uh, uh, everything, uh, uh, civilizations can be... Well, civilization in general is in the mode of passion and tends toward the mode of ignorance. The, 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 Srila Prabhupada once said the, Vedic, the real Vedic civilization is in the forest, where away from even the village, even the village is considered to be in the mode of passion. In the forest where the rishis dwell, that is in the mode of goodness. That's the best Vedic civilization. Then, another meaning. He who has infinite kalyana gunas. Kalyana means that which is beneficial, that which is desirable. This is the best meaning, or the, the meaning that, uh, well, appeals to the devotees, most of all. And Krishna is lauded again and again and again. We find in Shastra devotees praising him for his unlimited, auspicious qualities. He, in that sense, I mean, he who has qualities. Now, everyone has qualities. They may be good qualities or bad qualities. Often when we say qualities, we mean good qualities, but then we can qualify that by saying bad qualities. But all of Krishna's qualities are good. When he kisses his mother, that is good. And when he kills his enemy, that's also good. 
Everything he does is good. <clears throat> in fact, good qualities are in him. Only he's the fountainhead of all good qualities and those good qualities also manifest in those who take shelter of him by their association with him. And we may say, well, there are so many people who are, they're not particularly religious, but they're good. They're, they're not very religious, but they're good people. But Bhagavatam says, Harava bhaktasya kuto mahan gunaha. Where are the good qualities in those who are not devotees? Where are the great qualities? It may be good, but it's not great. If it's not connected with Krishna, it's not in connection with the Absolute Truth, therefore it is extremely limited and temporary and probably misleading also. Just like at the present time, people think it's a very good quality to... <clears throat> Here in India, where there are a lot of people who don't have access to good education, so if someone makes a school for uplifting a depressed section of the population, that's considered to be something very good. But then if we look at it from the transcendental perspective, the real education means how to get out of this material world rather than how to get an education which is supposed to help us get along in this material world, which is only going to pertain to this life anyway and an education which doesn't focus on the real aim of life, which is to be Krishna conscious, that can be said to be more harmful than good even. So what is the definition of good it differs from person to person, but the, from the absolute perspective, from the understanding of reality as it is, as we understand from the Vedas. Veda means knowledge. All goodness resides in him. He is goodness personified. So, Krishnadatta Bharadvaj gives the explanation. Gunan jnana ananda madhurya vatsalya adin bibharti iti gunabrit. He who possesses qualities such as Jnana has been glossed here as perfection in knowledge about everything past, present and future. As Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Veda ham samatitani vartamanani charjana bhavishani chabhutani. I know, every, I know, Krishna says, everything past, present and future. Ananda, absolute bliss, unimaginable in the material situation, absolute bliss. Then, Madhurya, sweetness, vatsalya, <clears throat> kindness, like the, or the, the natural feeling of affection, just like the cow to the calf. Adi means, and so many other qualities are in him. But you know, Thakur sums it up by ascribing to Krishna the name Samasta Guna Gana Dharma. Samasta Guna Gana Dharma. The abode of all qualities. Which here, of course, particularly means qualities which we see as good, but as Krishna himself says in Bhagavad Gita, Sada Sach Chaiva Charjana. I am both good and bad. Even the bad comes from Krishna. Or rather, the bad is connected with him inasmuch as nothing can exist without him. And bad means to not be conscious of him, aware of him, surrender to him. Bad means to turn away from him. So even what, what is bad is in relation with him. There's nothing outside a relationship with him. Sri Madhvacharya describes the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, as Kalyana Akila Sadguna. He is, the bo he is the abode of all auspicious good qualities. 
that's how we can roughly translate it. In Lord Sri Ram, we find 16 prominent Kalyana gunas, beneficial qualities. We find at the beginning of Valmiki Ramayana, who is that person now living on earth? who is possessed of good qualities. And the, the qualities are, quite, are listed. And the answer is Rama. Rama. Valmiki wants to know. Narada answers. Gunavan. Well, that's, that covers them all. He's uh, filled with qualities. That's the first one. But that's, that's mapped onto Soshilya. Which it was another way of saying that he is endowed with all good qualities. Then what are they? Viryavan, full of prowess and heroism. Dharmagya, he knows what is dharma. He knows what is right. Which also means that he does what is right. Kritagya, he is grateful. He doesn't forget any thing which is done in devotion for him. Satyavakya, he speaks the truth. Dhravata, he's firm in his vows. Many of these qualities, of course, are discussed individually within the course of Vishnu Sahasranama. Charitrena Yukta, he has his good conduct. His character is of good character, we can say. Sarva Bhuteshu Hit. He's interested in the welfare of all living beings. Vidvan, he's learned. We already had Dharmagya, he's a knower of righteousness. That means he has proper discrimination. And Vidvan means he's learned in Vedic knowledge. So you can be Vidvan without being Dharmagya. Or you may have a sense of being of what is right and what is wrong without being very learned. But the two together is a very powerful competition. Samartha, he's competent. It's very important for a king or anyone who takes any responsibility. The king has to be competent. He can't be a blundering fool. So Lord Rama is competent. <clears throat> Eka Priya Darshanaha. Oh, he's very pleasing to see. Everyone likes to see him. He's that one. Atmavan. He is situated in himself. Uh, he's self-restrained. There's a saying in English, full of himself, which might, Atmavan could be translated as that, but full of oneself means to be very proud. But here, Atmavan means he's situated in knowledge of his, himself, he's satisfied in himself. So this encompasses uh, also the Atmaram, one who is satisfied in himself. Jitakrodha, one who has conquered anger. Of course, Lord Ram, his personality is eternally pure and exalted. Uh, most people, if they are at all to conquer over anger, have to make much effort to do so. Mm. Duty man, who is effulgent, his, his bodily luster is very bright. Anasuyaka, he doesn't bear envy or malice or grudges toward anyone. Kasya bhibhyati devaha cha sangyuge, even the demigods fear to engage with him in battle. So, he has so many qualities. This name Gunabrit is very important. Um, 
in understanding the nature of the Absolute Truth, we'll, we'll discuss that more in discussing the next name, which is Nirguna. So these two names, which appear to be contradictory, are right next to each other in Vishnu Sahasranam. So Guna Brit, who has qualities, and Nirguna, who doesn't have qualities, is the literal meaning. So understanding his qualities and understanding they are inherent in him, eternal in him, he is the ultimate reality, there's no reality beyond him, and these eternal qualities are non-different from him. They are the, uh, the absolute truth. Murti Man, we had that name in Vishnu Sahasranam. He is form and with he is his very form, and with the form comes Nama, Rupa, Guna, Lila. He has a name, he has form, he has qualities, his pastimes, they're all real. All the names of Vishnu in Vishnu Sahasranam, they all pertain to his qualities. And practically the name Vishnu is all pervading because in Vishnu Sahasranam, because Vishnu means all pervading. Uh, and they all, they, all these names describe his qualities. Raghava Goswami, a Gorya Vaishnava author, in his Hari Bhakti Ratna Prakash, wrote, here's the translation, They who hanker after impersonal, so-called liberation, may protest, You have said, you say that Sri Krishna is the Supreme Brahman, that he is full of transcendental bliss, that he is eternally manifest, and that he enjoys pastimes in his own spiritual form. Does Brahman have a form? Is there any evidence to support this statement? Does Brahman have attributes? Does Brahman have opulences? Does Brahman have a home? So in this way, the impersonalist who is convinced that Brahman doesn't have a form, that there's no evidence to support this, that he doesn't have attributes, they challenge the Vaishnavas. Come on, tell us. But those who are devoted to Sri Krishna Chandra's lotus feet can reply, and they do reply. They reply to the impersonalists who have very strongly promoting their position. The Vaishnavas reply. This is all from Hari Bhakti Ratna Prakash. How foolishly you speak! Who is able to completely describe the transcendental forms, qualities, and other features of Lord Krishna, whose glories are without end? Lord Brahma prays, and then in Hari Bhakti Ratna Prakash is quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam. Gunatmas tepi gunan vimatum hitavatirnasya ka ishiresya kalena yair va vimita sukalpair. Bhu Pang Shava Ke Mihika Dubhash Aha. Brahma says, in time, great scientists may be able to count all the atoms of the universe, all the stars and planets that we see in the sky, and all the particles of snow. But who among them can count the unlimited transcendental qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? In other words, they can't. Even if they're able to count all the atoms in the universe, and scientists do estimate the number based on what they presently know. Based on what they presently know. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he, Krishna, Lord Brahma says, descends on the surface of the globe for the benefit of all living entities. Then, Hari Bhakti Ratna Prakash continues, quoting Padma Purana, Yo sao niguna ityukta shastreshu jagadishvara prakritari heya samyuktair gunaya heyatva muchate. When the Vedic literature say that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Master of the Universe, has no material qualities, Nirguna. They mean he has no material, abominable qualities. So we're jumping ahead a little bit to the next name, Nirguna. 
But these two names have to be understood in relation to each other. So I'm speaking a bit about Nirguna, no qualities in this name, Guna Brit, who has qualities. And speaking of Nirguna, the next name, I'll also, Krishna willing, speak on Guna Brit, he who has qualities. The Lord has no material qualities, this is the point, but only spiritual qualities. And his pastimes, for his pleasure, they naturally demonstrate his transcendental qualities. Bhagavatam, in the course of describing Krishna's transcendental rasadams, Sugadev Goswami says, Nunang Nishreya Sarthaya Vyakti Bhagavata Unrapa Avyayasya Prameyasya Nirgunasya Guna Manaha. You see, here we have Nirgunasya of he who has no qualities. Guna Manaha, who is the very being of all qualities or whose qualities are absolutely linked with his very self. In our material existence, we have qualities, but I may have a certain qualities or mindset or character in one life and a different identity and persona in another life. But Krishna's qualities are fixed eternally in him, although he manifests them in various extraordinary ways, just like a kaleidoscope is always changing. So the translation of this verse from Bhagavatam, O King, Shukadeva speaking to Parikshit, the Supreme Lord is inexhaustible and immeasurable, and he is untouched by the material modes because he is their controller. His personal appearance in this world is meant for bestowing the highest benefit on humanity. Then, we find in the first canto of Bhagavatam, the famous and important verse, Atma Ramas Chamunayo Nigranta Apyurukrume Kurvantya Hai Tukin Bhaktim Itam Guna Bhuto Hare He. Itam Bhuta Guna Harihi. This Hari Krishna is Guna Brit. The same idea is conveyed by Bhuta Gunaha. Sri Goswami said all different varieties of Atma Ramas, those who take pleasure in Atma or the spiritual self especially those established on the path of self-realization, though freed from all kinds of material bondage, desire to render unalloyed devotional service under the personality of Godhead. This means that the Lord possesses transcendental qualities and therefore can attract everyone, including liberated souls. This is such an important statement. <clears throat> There's a whole chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita dedicated to Lord Chaitanya's 61 explanations of the Atma Rama verse to Sanatana Goswami. It all hinges on the qualities of the Supreme Lord, that even people who are satisfied in themselves, they're no longer trying to take pleasure in the material qualities manifested by sattva guna, rajoguna and tamaguna. They're not even interested in sattva guna. They've gone beyond that and they're situated in their self but not fully and completely. Otherwise they couldn't be attracted as they are to the Supreme Lord when they're not attracted to anything and they're just situated in transcendence. What could attract them? the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord. 
those transcendental qualities, 40 of them, are listed in the first canto of Bhagavatam, in which it is stated. I'm just giving the translation. In him reside truthfulness, cleanliness, intolerance of others' unhappiness. What a, what a beautiful quality, intolerance of others' unhappiness. The power to control anger, self-satisfaction, straightforwardness, steadiness of mind, control of the sense organs, responsibility, equality, tolerance, equanimity, faithfulness, knowledge, absence of sense enjoyment, leadership, chivalry, influence, the power to make everything possible, the discharge of proper duty, complete independence, dexterity, fullness, of all beauty, serenity, kind-heartedness, ingenuity, gentility, magnanimity, determination, perfection in all knowledge, proper execution, possession of all objects of enjoyment, joyfulness, immovability, fidelity, fame, being worshipable, pridelessness, being the personality of Godhead, eternity. Any what, any one of these qualities is so profound, they actually require to be discussed every one in detail, deeply. If we just say truthfulness, cleanliness, it, it just sounds like, well, it's a list. But actually every quality is, is so profound. If we see even in a jiva, any one of these qualities, to a significant degree, we, we admire that person. Oh, it's so truthful. It's so clean. Clean, not in... Well, that's one sense, but it, it doesn't just mean fastidiousness in keeping your body clean or your house clean, but it, it, it also purity of consciousness. So like this, these qualities, the 40 are listed, and then the Bhagavatam goes on to say, in him reside many other transcendental qualities which are eternally present and never to be separated from him. This is to be understood. It's not that he acquires qualities or that in different births he has different qualities or his character changes. These qualities are always inherent in him eternally. They are him. They are non-different from him. He's described as the personality of Godhead, the reservoir of all goodness and beauty, Lord Sri Krishna. In the purport of this verse, Srila Prabhupada writes, <clears throat> paraphrasing different statements from the Shastra, Srila Prabhupada writes, Even if it were possible to count the atoms after smashing the earth into powder, still it would not be possible to estimate the unfathom, unfathomable transcendental qualities of the Lord. How many are there? More than the atoms of the earth, more than the atoms of the universe. But even if you take even one of them, we can't fully understand even one of them because it's unfathomable, it's so deep, it's so profound. Srila Prabhupada continues, It is said that Lord Ananta Deva has tried to expound the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord with his innumerable tongues, numberless tongues, and that for numberless years together it has been impossible to estimate the qualities of the Lord. <clears throat> the above statement of the qualities of the Lord is just to estimate his qualities as far as a human being is able to see them in him. So there you go, there's Krishna's CV. When people want to get a job, they want to be hired in a certain position, they have to present their 
CV, curricula vital, something like that. It's from Latin. Biodata, it may be called in the Western world more. So they, they give their qualities, their qualifications, and then they have to have some, uh, preferably they'll have some recommendation, and then they'll be interviewed. So in the interview, they're supposed to, the interviewer is supposed to try to understand, does this person actually have what it takes to fulfill the role that we want him to do for our company? So if we're looking for God, we should find Krishna. He has the qualities which make him God. If he's going to be God, he should have all these qualities. If he doesn't, he's not God. All the transcendental, divine qualities in full, they should be present in him, otherwise he cannot be good. We find those qualities in him only. No one else. Who else? It must be Krishna. The last sentence of the purport of this series of verses in which the qualities of the Lord are described, which I just quoted from Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada writes, His qualities, therefore, cannot be counted by anyone, however great one may be. However great one may be in the material world, and here in the, on this planet, in this Kali Yuga especially, we're... <laughs> We're really not great at all. We're really miserable specimens of humans. But however great one may be, we can't even count his qualities. We can't come anywhere near counting. We can't even imagine what it means to count all his great qualities. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 